Have you ever doubted your leadership? Felt as if the person in charge doesn't really know what they're doing? Or they might have a lack of information as to what really is going on? I have. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Kyle Cobb, and today I'm going to be talking about leadership. More specifically, competence. In the next following slides, join me as we unpack what leadership is, what competence is, and how it relates to leadership. And we're going to look also at what competent leaders look like. And then lastly, we're going to follow up with all of this, how do I actually become a competent leader? What can I practice? What can I put into play to become a more competent leader? Please join me. If we're going to talk about competence and how it relates to leadership, first let's take a leadership and see what it is. That way we have a better understanding of how they work together and how important competence is. So what is leadership? Well, by definition, leadership is the action of leading a group of people or an organization. And in leadership, there are eight major leadership theories. And in those theories, there are over 100 qualities that can make a good leader, that can aid a leader holding these qualities become a better leader. And of those qualities today, we're going to talk about competence. So in the next slide, I'm going to talk about competence and how it relates to leadership. So what exactly is competence? How do I look at it? What are some things that complement competence? Well, by definition, competence is having the necessary ability, knowledge, or skill to do something successfully. This is unpacked further by a quote I found by Stephen Covey. He says that trust is a function of two things, character and competence. Character includes your integrity, your motive, and your intent with people. Whereas competence includes your capabilities, your skill, your track record. These are both vital, he thinks, and I couldn't agree more. So what are some complementers to competence? Uh, some other qualities that are similar, uh, I would say, are listed right here, so please follow along with me as we go through them. These include being able to be socially intelligent, having a good conflict management realm, having good interpersonal skills, agility, good decision making, being a great coach, having some sort of emotional intelligence balance, industry expertise, change management, sharing a compelling vision, courage, managing yourself, inclusiveness, and organizational citizenship. Let's backtrack a little bit to the quote by Stefan where he says that competence includes your capabilities and your skills. I couldn't agree with this more. I think this is something that we need to take away solely from this quote because to me that's what competence is, your skills and your capabilities. If you're going to lead an organization and you want to be competent and you want to have people trust in you, you need to, you need to be able to back that up. Well, your track record. How did you get to the place that you are today? How are you in the leadership role and I'm not? Well, my track record can speak for that. In order to be competent, your track record and your skills and your capabilities all have to align with one another. So now that we know what competence is and a little bit about it, what do competent leaders really look like? Join me in the next slide and we'll talk about it. Who are competent leaders? What do they look like? How can I recognize one? Well, I would like to think a competent leader being as the know-it-all type. They can fix anything. Any bad or sticky situation, there's a positive outcome. Maintaining a positive outlook on everything, it seems. Competent leaders inspire those around them. They inspire those around them to exceed expectations. As a leader, you should never settle for subpar results. Competent leaders certainly don't. Competent leaders don't just rely on their past ability or past skills or experiences. Being a competent leader is a combination of many attributes. Competent leaders uh, ex express a certain level of tact. They express a certain level of confidence in themselves, and then they instill that confidence in the, the, into the subordinates or the group or the organization. Everybody can be affected positively when there's a good competent leader at the top. Now that we know what competent leaders look like, you might be wondering, well, I want to be a competent leader. How do I do so? In the next slide, we're going to wrap it up, and I'm going to show you four key points that I've found to be held most true when becoming a competent leader. I want to be a competent leader. I want to be the person that people look to to get them out of a tough time. Be a stronghold, a wealth of knowledge. Well, I found a couple things that we can look at together in order for you to be a more competent leader. Firstly, competent leaders uphold a positive vision. The idea that everything is going to be fine, it's going to work out. This is done with confidence as well. 
Confidence and competence go hand in hand, I believe. If I say it's going to be all right and everything's going to work out, it's not because I'm being hopeful. I'm saying these things because I wholeheartedly believe that I have the skills and the abilities to make everything okay, to lead in a way that the grass will be greener on the other side. Next, express gratitude. This is very important. Don't forget to do this. Give those that deserve a pat on the back that pat on the back. Be hopeful and be mindful of those around you. Pay attention to the hard work that everybody's putting in. This is something that competent leaders do daily. Competent leaders, as I previously said, can be described as the know-it-alls, but unfortunately, not everybody knows everything. So as a competent leader, it's okay to express things that you're uncomfortable with, things that you might not have a lot of uh, experience with, uh, situations that you don't necessarily know how to fix like Johnny on the spot. That's all right. Own them. Come forward, the, come forward about them. Be transparent. Competent leaders are a stronghold, a wealth of knowledge, but don't try to fake it till you make it when you're trying to be a competent leader. It's okay to be wrong, I guess, in some situations. And lastly, remain calm. Competent leaders are cool, calm, and collected. They know what to do. Uh, in difficult or stressful situations, competent leaders, they have a knack for combining their positive vision and they talk less and ask more questions in order to gain more knowledge. I believe that's what being competent is all about, the wealth of knowledge. And it's also about the drive. It's about wanting to improve. So I really hope that you've enjoyed my points and I hope that you've taken something away from this. I hope that you implement these things that we've talked about in order to be more competent later in your day-to-day -day life. Thank you and have a good day.